Welcome to Electro Online. Before we show you some actual examples of how to go through the process mathematically and come up with the correct answer, we wanted to summarize in general how to find the Fourier series. Again, starting with a periodic function, and here we have a graphical example of a periodic function. There's an impulse every so often that the distance from there to there is called the period in time, and so that the function looks the same at every interval of the period. That's what we mean by a repeating, uh, repeating function like this, which has a periodic nature. We want to be able to express that function in terms of a summation of DC portions, which is this right here, this is what we call the DC portion of the function, plus an infinite summation of AC or sinusoidal functions. Notice that the amplitude of the functions will decrease as the number n increases. So for n equals 1, we'll have something like this. For n equals 2 or 3, we'll have the next one and so forth. Sometimes it'll skip an n. It'll go from 1 to 3 to 5 to 7 and so forth. Sometimes it uses every n. But it'll be a summation of sinusoidal type of functions, which will have increasing frequencies. You can see that there's more oscillations per unit time and the amplitude will tend to decrease as well as we keep adding those. When you add up a certain number of them, you eventually will end up with something that very, that very closely resembles the original periodic function, except in this case, it will simply be a sum, not an infinite sum, because that would be nice to do that, but in practicality, it's good to have at least five or six or seven terms of the summation. It will then very closely resemble the original function, but it will be in term of sinusoidal functions, sines and cosines, which are a lot easier to work with. It always comes down to find the, the constants right here, a sub naught, a sub n, and b sub n, and here are the three equations that allow us to find these constants. For a sub naught, it's simply 1 over the period times the integral from 0 to the period of the original function f of t for one period times dt. For a sub n and b sub n, it's 2 over the period times the integral from 0 to t. In the case of a sub n, it's the original function f of t times the cosine of n omega t dt. And for the b sub n, it's f of t times the sine of n omega t dt. Remember, of course, that we know that the frequency is equal to 1 over the period and that the angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi f and since f is 1 of the period we can say that omega can be written as 2 pi over the period and then of course when you integrate it and evaluate it from 0 to t there'll be an interaction between the value of omega and the value of t when you substitute the period in for t but of course there's nothing like some good examples, so in the next several videos, we'll begin by showing you some straightforward, simple examples of periodic functions and how to find the Fourier series of those particular functions. And that's how we do that.